Hi everyone, it's Nick Pavlov. Uh, welcome to our YouTube channel. So far we had an introduction to Microsoft Fabric Workspace and learned how to load data uh, to a lake house using a few different ways. Now in this video I wanted to get a little bit more practical and show you how to build a Power BI report using Microsoft Fabric elements that we have learned. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's build a report in Power BI. From a high level point of view, our process will look the following. First, we will load files to a lake house. Then we will convert those files into tables. Then we will build a simple data model and then use Power BI to connect to that model and build a report. You are welcome to follow along with me. I will be providing a link to get the sample files in the description section of this video. Now, there are a couple things that I did to prepare. Uh, so I created a new lake house, which I called Adventure Works. The original lake house that I was using has gotten a little scattered. There are too many random objects laying around. So I just wanted to get a little organized going forward. And Adventure Works is the name of a sample data set that Microsoft provides. In my new lake house, I created a new folder, Adventure Works, and I put all of the CSV files uh, that we will be using for this report in that folder. Then I created a new data flow, uh, remember Power Query online experience, and converted the product and sales files into tables. The reason being is that the order date column in my sales table right here has the format of day of the week, month, day, and year. And the standard load to tables feature could not properly figure that out, putting them into separate columns. And as a result, other columns were lost. It was pushing them right ways, right? So my columns, the unit price, sales and cost were substituted by other columns. And these are the most important columns in my, in my table. So that's why I used the good old Power Query to manually fix that and make sure that my table had all of the columns that I needed. This shows, right, that sometimes depending on your file and data, it may not be as straightforward as right clicking the CSV file and turning them into, into a table. Sometimes you're going to have to get it in there and manually fix and clean your data. The other tables, right, region and the salesperson, and the salesperson region, they're simple CSV files, so I can just simply right click them and turn them into tables. Let me actually write that down, Adventure Works, again, for the sake of keeping this organized and then I will copy this and then turn the region file into a table. That's it. And then another file that I wanted to convert to table is the salesperson. So again, I, I will right click load to tables and use the same naming convention. And then what I will do, I will also rename these existing tables by adding adventure works in front of them like that. And we'll do the same for the sales table. For some reason, you can see that the CSV, the two CSV files that I converted to tables are spelled in small letters, even though when I was creating them, I indicated them, I capitalized A and W, right? So this could be another a bug of the preview. Hopefully, Microsoft will be able to fix this uh, by the time the product becomes available, right? So let me, let me go ahead and change this manually. And let me do the same thing for a salesperson. And I can capitalize P as well. Unable to rename the specified. Why is that? Already exists in Lake House. All right, what do you mean? This is what I was talking about. There's still a little bit bugs here and there that uh, you can find. I really hope that these will be fixed when the product becomes GA. Anyways, I couldn't find the reason why this will not change, you know, the name of my table. For some reason, it just refuses to do though. It's not going to stop us from going forward. 
I will not be converting other files into tables because these are the you know region and target. We don't really need them for report. We can we can work with four tables at this point. After I prepared my tables, what I'm going to do is I will click here and then I will go to N SQL endpoint view. Once this page loads up and all of my files are here, I am interested in the model view. So I'll click the model view and I will build relationships between these uh, four tables. Uh, this experience is very similar to Power BI. If you have done modeling in Excel or Power BI, then this is very familiar to you, right? So what we will do is we will be using a simple star schema. I, I have a sales table, which is a fact table, and I have three dimension tables, right? So it's a very simple model. This is a very simple model to demonstrate the capabilities, right? So what I will do is I will build relationships. So the product table, right? I'm going to get the product key and the product key in, uh, in the fact table. And this should build a relationship, right? One to many. Then you are going to go ahead and grab sales territory key from the region to sales territory key. You will click confirm. All right, we're good. And then lastly, let's build a relationship between salesperson and uh, fact table. The salesperson is, I believe it is an employee key. Yeah, there we go, employee key. All right, so uh, we build our model. After connecting these four tables, what I am interested in is I will go back to the data view. And then I will select my sales table and I can see I need a measure. I need to calculate my sales amount. So if I look at my sales table, let me scroll to my right. I don't have the sales amount here, right? I have quantity and I have unit price. I'm going to have to multiply quantity by unit price to get the sales amount. So here I have this tab called new measure. And this will give me a field to create a DAX measure. So it's the same thing. It's the same DAX measure as in Power BI. So we are going to call this measure sales amount. And that is going to be a sum X formula, right? Sum X formula, the table will be the sales table, adventure work sales. And what I'm doing, I am multiplying quantity by unit price. There we go. And after creating a measure or several measures, you will create new report. So go to a uh, click on this tab new report. And this will open a Power BI desktop experience in the cloud. I think this is pretty amazing actually. So this looks very much like Power BI desktop, but it's in the cloud in your browser. Of course, this is still a preview. I am sure this will get a lot better as the product becomes available and then more iterations of it come out, right? But even now, this looks pretty good. So what I will do is I just can click on visuals and start building my report. So I have uh, a measure here, which is called sales amount. And I can go to product and I can look at by category, right? Sales by category. And here's my first visual. But then I can do it by region if I wanted to, right? Let's use this graph. Uh, so that is going to be region. All right, so it shows me all, all the countries in here. Uh, now I could use a card, right? I could use a card and where I'm going to put my measure sales amount. I could do something like um, this here, tree map, where I'm going to put sales by what else do I have here? I got subcategory maybe. Yeah, something like that. I wanted to use a waterfall. I'm going to put my sales by salesperson. Uh, something like that. I mean, I'm not the best at building visuals, right? <laughs> As you can see. But this is for demonstration purposes, right? 
So with this feature, you can now build your Power BI reports actually in the cloud. You don't even need to have Power BI desktop. Obviously, there are pros and cons, right? I thought about the, the main advantage is that you don't have to have Power BI desktop on your computer which means that a lot of Mac users, right? Not everybody's using Windows, obviously. I mean, there are a lot of Mac people who will install Windows on their computers so they could use Power BI. And now these people can develop Power BI reports on Mac without having to switch to Windows or installing anything. Everything is available in the cloud. So a couple of disadvantages I thought about was that the cloud version, of course, right, doesn't have all of the options that the proper Power BI desktop has. Uh, for example, I, I couldn't find where I could create an additional table. For example, if I wanted to create a calendar table, right, I can't just create a new table. So that's number one. So it's a very limited experience. Again, I'm saying that I'm expecting this uh, will improve in the future, but for now, it's limited. And number two is, which is even more important, is there's no option to roll back your changes. So everything you do will instantly change. So this kind of report building may not be really applicable for critical reports because you don't want to mess something up, you know, while building it in the cloud. However, this is still an amazing feature for quick data exploration and analysis on the fly. The absence of rollback may be a deal breaker for many BI developers, right? So until Microsoft comes back with a fix how to do that, Power BI developers will still be using their uh, desktop version. So that's why let me show a more traditional way how you can also build a report. You will open your Power BI desktop. Once you open your regular Power BI desktop, right, normal Power BI desktop on your machine, there are a couple options that I found that you can connect to this data set. So the easiest way, right, the number one would be you'll go to your tables and then here in the settings, you will go and grab the SQL connection string. You can use this to connect externally to this Lakehouse data set from Power BI or other clients. So what you will do is you will go to get data and then click to SQL Server, put this connection string into your server field. And then this will treat this connection as a regular SQL Server, right? Another way what you could do in Power BI, if you have an updated version of your Power BI, you will have this one lake data hub um, option. So you will click here and you have four options here, data marts, Power BI data sets, and what I'm interested in is lake house. It's still in preview, so you will click lake houses. And then this is going to connect to your lake house, right? This is the demo adventure works lake house, which I wanted to connect to, right? Even from here, you can choose connect to SQL endpoint, or you can simply connect it directly. So I'll connect it. And that is going to import my data, this data, that I have these tables, exactly these same tables, right, are going to go uh, into my Power BI desktop. And from here, you know how to build this, right? So we can go ahead and go to our sales. What's interesting is the measure that I built in, in the cloud right here using this new measure button has been saved and now is available from here. So I can go ahead and uh, start building, you know, my report here. So I can build the exact same report as I did in here, right? Uh, but I won't do that because I already have it in here. So what are the advantages of using Power BI Desktop? Obviously, this is your own Power BI copy, right? So if you don't like something, you can roll back. You can have multiple PBIX files. A lot of people prefer Power BI Desktop because it's you can roll back changes. You can, you know, experiment with stuff and it's not going to be saved right away. So that's the, uh, the main thing. Obviously, also, you have a lot more options in Power BI Desktop. And the Power BI Desktop is an amazing tool. I love this. There's so many available features now in here, right? If you compare this with the cloud version, it's kind of a little bit limited. Let's be honest. In both of these reports, all of my data is sitting in the lake house, which is the single source of truth for an entire organization, right? So this same data can be used in other reports or models, but the fact of the matter is that all of my data is in one place. There are no longer different folders, different tables, different databases, everything is in one lake. 
And this is one of the most important advantages of Microsoft Fabric. Uh, we at Sentida call it one lake for one truth. All right, so in this video, we saw how to model our data and build a Power BI report from scratch using the cloud version of Power BI. Everything we did was in the cloud. I could have done that from Mac. So yeah, this, this is how you build reports in, in Power BI using Microsoft Fabric Elements. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Do not forget to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you later.